Hi guys. So today uh, we're going to build my metal bass tone from scratch. This video is going to be very similar to my modern metal tone from scratch um, because it did so well. So we're going to do that for bass. What can I say? Need them views, yo. If more of you guys would subscribe, I wouldn't have to steal my own ideas. I got my Helix rack going, obviously, and then we got HX edit open. So we're going to just dive right in. So I am using, and this is very uh, controversial because this is not a great bass, but this is my bass. See it? This might come as a surprise to some of you, but it's just a Squire Jaguar bass with active pickups. That's how it came. It's bone stock, nothing special. And I guess the moral of this story is you don't necessarily need an amazing piece of gear to yield good results. Um, a common theme that I try to kind of weave in is like, don't get caught up in what you think you need. Just work with what you have. And then as you kind of build things up, then you can improve or you can upgrade your gear. So I'm using this modest Squire Jaguar base. Um, I'm using Elixirs. Elixir 105 to 45. They are new strings. I've mentioned this in the video before, but one thing you want to make sure you're doing is if you're tracking bass, use new strings, get new strings. They're the brightest, they're the snappiest, they feel the best to me. They definitely sound better. So make sure your strings are clean, make sure they're new. I've been using elixirs in recent months on my guitars and now I'm trying it out on my bass. And so far so good. They're just bright enough Maybe not bright enough for some people, but they're bright enough for me. Um, and again, as I've stated in some of my videos, my hands, I, I wash my hands before I play, you know, but I start sweating and my sweat is very corrosive and it ruins strings. So I've had good luck with the Elixir so far. So I'm using them on bass. Again, Elixir 105 to 45s, Jaguar bass into my Helix. We have HX edit open. Now I did a little bit of like cheating. I um, copied... Well, let's just get started. So first thing we're going to do is switch my input to guitar and turn my gate on. This is just the, the raw bass right now. Cool. Now, the first block typically what I do is so it doesn't sound like absolute shite while you're building it is to add an IR block. And for that, I'm going to use, uh, it's an own hammer Ampeg block. Mm. Let me refer to my notes. I made notes. I try to prepare for you people. Here we go. What do we got here? Do I need that? No. All right. Um, the OH410 Ampeg SVT 10 cut dynamic. Yeah, baby. SVT, SVT 10 cut dynamic. Where the fuck is that? 10 cut dynamic. SVT 10 cut dynamic. Does it look a lot like that one? Duplicates? I have the same IR in here twice. Unacceptable. So, all right. We are using the, uh, for the IR, I'm using the Ownhammer 410 Ampeg SVT 10 cut. So that is basically, according to my notes, it's based on an Ampeg 4x10 um, with a dynamic mic. The mic is a MD421. It's based on a Telefunken MD421. And uh, the stock speakers that came in that that svt 410 so we're using that i am using it's just a, 
going right into the cab, it's going to really kind of make it sound dull. I'm using the SVT4 Pro. If I remember correctly, I was having some... Channel volume is all the way at 10 by default. I was running into gain staging issues here. Now you can turn the channel volume down and I haven't done enough research to know, but I was concerned that if I turned the channel volume down in the cab block, it would affect the tone. It probably isn't, I'm, I'm probably wrong. So I took my output and just brought that down 6 dB. <laughs> Cool. Um, now, I don't typically do a ton of tweaking until I add my distortion block, which I have saved and I'm going to just paste in from my patch. So it is the Obsidian 7000. <laughs> Cool. So what do we have for settings here? I have the drive at 10. The level is at 6. The blend is at 7.9, so it's a lot of blend of the pedal. The grunt is set to cut. The attack is set to boost. The master is at 5.5. The bass is at plus 3 dB. The low mid frequency is at 250 hertz, and that is negative 3.5 dB. The high mid frequency is 3K and that is negative 4.6 dB. The treble I have set to 3 dB and the distortion is on, obviously. I mean, that sounds pretty badass right there. It's, this is simple. This really is simple. Um, what takes the longest is tweaking the, uh, the distortion. Like you want to get that. I mean, it's to taste, but that's what took the longest. And I cheated and copied it from my actual patch. So we don't have to make this a 25 minute video on trying to find the settings at work. So let's go back to the amp. Um, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. We're going to save this real quick. Okay. Saved. Uh. So it's a little, it's a little dark and not super exciting. So, um, so what I did there is I turned on the ultra low to kind of bring up my resonant frequency. And bringing up that, the, turning on the ultra low kind of gets rid of a little bit, a little bit of the farty. A lot more bottom end. Just seems to sound a little farty. So the ultra low is on. And then I like to turn the bright on on this amp. That might sound a little bit bright to some of you, but in the context of a mix, that's how I like my bass. I like a big bump in my resonant low end, the mid to be pretty scooped, and then a big high end to kind of match that low end. Now let's get rid of some of the rumble. Take this down a notch. So I hope you guys are listening on some good monitors or some decent headphones and you, otherwise you're not going to be able to hear these, these minuscule changes. 
So if we take this 33 hertz all the way down, there's still plenty of low end, but we don't necessarily need to do that here. I'll bring it down just a couple dB. All right, now I like to also dip 300 hertz. It gets a little farty. And I'm nuts, dude. A little 5K and a little 8K. I like how that sounds. Now the problem is, once you get this you know, recorded and into the mix, you're inevitably going to need to cut some of the high end off of this bass because it'll get fatiguing and it will, I mean, it's got some peak, a lot of, just a lot of hiss and, or not hiss, but you know, it's got some unfavorable high end happening. So I usually, let's just play around. We'll take it down to 11K. This is um, a high cut. I added a uh, low and high cut EQ block. Save my work. I have a habit of saving my work as I move along because <laughs> One thing I've done is I've worked on a patch for a while and then I kind of switch it to see what another one sounds like. And then if you go back without saving, it'll be gone. A little bit of a glitchy type of thing with the Helix, but. We still have the high end snarl, but it's cutting away some of the unfavorable high end without. With. really reins it in and I and always add a low cut um, and I usually go to about 80 just to give her some of that really low stuff now you might not be able to hear it but in a mix in the context of a mix that low one will build up and you'll, it'll just eat up your headroom so it's without with Save my work. This is great playing, dude. So we have our low and our high cut, and I think this is it. Like I said, it's pretty. It's a pretty simple patch. Now you can, depending on what your bass is doing, you may have to adjust uh, some of your amp settings and go in and adjust some of, I mean, you, you can't just take my settings and straight up use them all the time. The bass has a lot to do with it, but this is how I build my bass tone. And I played around with these settings inside of the Obsidian 7000 block, which is based on a B7K. I played around forever with them, hours probably. And I just came up with some settings with this bass, with new strings, that sounded good. That's these. And then, I mean, you can swap out amps too to get the sound you're looking for. This is pretty simple. I put this SVT4 on and I didn't have to mess with the drive, with the bass, with the mid, with the treble. I didn't have to mess with those. I used the EQ to kind of sculpt my sound. just love a bass with some snarl so just 
mute this real quick. So that's it. That's that's my bass tone. That's my metal bass tone. I, I used it in uh, a song I just finished recording. And I'm very, very pleased with how it sounds. Um, like I said, a couple things to remember is like, make sure when you're tracking your bass, use fresh strings, use new strings. If you're somebody like me who runs into like corrosion on your strings or you sweat a lot, clean your strings. I mean, I'm telling you, maintaining your gear goes a long way. I'm going to, hold on. I'm trying to think and do things at the same time. Where is that? Hello. Oh, here we go. This little guy. This is the string cleaner. Aptly name. It's basically got microfiber on the inside and uh, it clamps around your strings and you just run it up and down your neck and it, and it cleans off your strings. You get rid of all that nasty sweat, the oils from your hands. Not everybody needs to do that. I need to do it. Otherwise my strings will just, they'll be shite. I'm, I'm telling you, if I play with uncoated strings for a few hours and then I walk away from my guitar and don't clean it, the next day it'll be corroded. There'll be corrosion already building up. So I use that and I use denate. I put a little bit of denatured alcohol on here, um, high content alcohol, which is pretty much 100% alcohol and it helps clean the strings. You don't want to get it on your guitar. You don't want to get it on your neck, but if you just put a little dab on these pads and then run it up and down your, your guitar, it keeps your strings fresh and you want fresh strings when you're recording. I mean, that's how I go about building a bass tone. Now, some of the EQ, the EQ moves that I made at the end are sort of kind of from um, my experience with mixing my bass. I didn't always put this EQ block in my bass tone, but I found that when I was mixing, I was cutting the high end and cutting some low end. So I figure make my job a little easier, put an EQ block in the patch and make things a little bit more like ready to go. But I know a lot of you guys ask about my bass tone. So um, I went over the B7K settings. I didn't really go over my amps. I'll go over my amp settings real quick. Sorry. Um, like I said, I, I loaded this up and I left the drive, the bass, the mid, the mid frequency and the treble, the channel volume, all stock. It's all bone stock. The master is stock. The only thing I changed is I turned on the ultra low. I turned on the bright and I then adjusted 33 Hertz. I'm negative three DB. 300 hertz negative two and a half db and then i do a boost of 5k and 8k both 1 db that's it that's all i did with this this amp block you could mess with the uh, the drive on on the amp peg and it'll give you a little more natural snarl from the amp i didn't find i needed to do that with my b7k block remember if you're going to use a, a distortion block kind of tweak things in tandem with your amp you know have have your amp have your distortion block active and then kind of go back and forth between your amp and your B7K or your whatever distortion you end up using. There are different ways you could go about getting a distorted sound. This is the way I do it. This is the way I, I like it to sound. It's simple, it's clean. You could have two bass tracks, one clean, one distorted, blend to taste, EQ on, different, on the different tracks. I don't find I need to do that with my stuff. So that's it, this is my bass tone my metal bass tone use own hammer impulses of course i love those guys check them out if you haven't their ampeg irs are great uh, i find i know it sounds like i'm like paid by them i'm not i'm not paid by them i just bought a bunch of their cabs and i think they all sound great every cab i've bought from them sounds good i've probably bought too many but uh that's it, guys. I'm not going to... I'm rambling. I'm rambling at this point. So there's my bass tone. Check it out. If you haven't checked it out already, I have a new uh, single that dropped. It's called Narcissism. It's streaming everywhere. It's on my Bandcamp. It's on my webpage. Thank you to everyone who's purchased it, who pre-ordered it, who streamed it. I really appreciate everybody's support. So I'm working on a Patreon, and I'm going to try and make all these patches that I create available to people on Patreon as kind of a way to, like, A get me to be a little more regular with my content, B, to kind of have fun with the Helix again and, and make 
patches. Like I used to just try and like make artist patches. Like I have a Foo Fighters patch and a Nirvana patch and different metal tone patches, clean patches. I'm going to make those available to my patrons on Patreon. When I get it all set up, it's not set up yet. I'm working on it. I need to figure out the IR situation. But I'm rambling again. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Awkward stare at the camera. <laughs>